lead resource speaker for today. Our U lead resource speaker is a graduate of Far Eastern University. Thank you so much, Sir Ron. Let's maximize our learning from this event. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for the welcoming remarks, may I call on the director of the Far Eastern University Career and Placement Office, Ms. Maria Carmencita Babes Suva Alfonso. Hi, Ma'am Babes, good afternoon. The virtual floor is yours. Thank you very much, Sir Ron. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, Hello, and let me share this quote from um, John Quincy Adams. Your actions inspire others to dream more, learn more, do more, and become more. You are a leader. My dear students, leadership starts with you. You can be a leader in your own way, in your family, in your class assignments, and eventually, in school and in your extracurricular activities. Most of you have what it takes to be a leader and you need not be a student organization officer to hone your leadership skills. You just need to know and embrace the leadership qualities to be able to practice and live by these qualities. And why is leadership important enough to be our topic this afternoon? because the skills needed for the future are changing. In the future of job survey last 2018 by World Economic Forum, leadership and social influence is, one, is in the top or uh, is uh, in uh, the top 10 skills needed for 2022. Let us maximize the learning from this webinar to help us become successful future industry leaders. On that note, I would like to thank our speaker, a very successful FEU communication alumnus, for agreeing to be part of this very important event as your guest speaker. I couldn't think of anyone but him who could uh, better inspire and teach you how to be a leader in your own way. I would also like to thank the Student Development Office, our partner for this event, for making this happen our digital media partner, the Marketing and Communications Office for the live stream and publicity, and most of all, you, our students, who are here this afternoon to learn and embrace the facets of leadership as you prepare for your corporate citizenship. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you. Thank you so much, Mom Babes, for such an inspiring welcoming remarks for our ULEAD Leadership Talk participants today. And now, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, to introduce to us our ULEAD resource speaker, may I call on the coordinator of the FEU Office of Student Development, Ms. Jonalyn Concha. Hi, Ma'am Jonah. Good afternoon. The screen is yours. Thank you so much, Sir Ron. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Allow me to introduce our U lead, U lead resource speaker for today. Our U lead resource speaker is a graduate of Far Eastern University with a degree of Bachelor of Arts in Communication. He is a Bridging Leadership Fellow in the Asian Institute of Management and U.S. Department of State Young Southeast Asian Leaders Initiative Academic Fellow specializing in social entrepreneurship and economic development in the University of Texas at Austin. He co-founded Pantaweed COVID Project, a youth-led crowdfunding initiative that raised more than five million worth of donations benefiting 12,000 families and 1,500 medical frontliners across Luzon during the height of the enhanced community quarantine. The initiative is one of the winners of the 2020 Be Like Jesse Youth Grant Competition. 
and was funded by the Jesse M. Robredo Foundation and Kaya Natin Movement. Out of the more, hundred, more, more than 850 organizations, Fantaweed COVID Project is also one of the 20 national finalists of the 10 accomplished youth organizations or TAYO awards. He is also the co-convener of Kapit Pinas, also known as Kapit Mindanao, an online and offline youth-led community convened by Millennials PH. Together with 300 plus youth organizations, NGOs, businesses, SK councils, informal youth groups, this Kapitiran started in April 2020 to assist 20 youth-led groups in Mindanao, followed by a disaster relief operations for 20 communities in Luzon, affected by Typhoon Quinta, Ulysses, Rolly, and Vicky. They have since raised 15 million pesos worth of donations through their efforts. They won as one of the 10 accomplished youth organizations of Tayo Foundation in 2020. Currently, he is the executive director of Aktibong Kabataan ng Mandaluyong or ACMA, a local-based organization in Mandaluyong advocating for active youth participation in the city. Recently, he joined the Nicanor Reyes Memorial Foundation as its executive director. He is also a Philippine Air Force reservist under the 1st Air Force Wing Reserve. Ladies and gentlemen, on your screen, Mr. Patrick Manuel. Sir Patrick, the virtual floor is yours. All right. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much, Ma'am Jonah, and of course, Ma'am Babes, for the very warm introduction. Before I start, I'd also like to say a good afternoon to all our attendees here in the Microsoft Teams Live, and of course, sa lahat ng mga estudyante na nakatutok sa ating Facebook Live. Thank you so much po for inviting me and it really feels good to be back home. Sabi nga ng tarpaulin natin sa Freedom Park in thy happy halls again. So this afternoon, I'll be sharing my leadership journey in FEU. Um, what are the pieces of advice that I can share sa mga estudyante, not only for the existing student leaders, but also for those who are still you know, planning to explore the world of student leadership in FEU. So this talk is not necessarily uh, only for the student leaders, either appointed or elected, but for everyone, sa mga panganay na sa tingin nila ay sila ay natural born leaders, and to all who are, you know, somehow graduating and expecting to enter the corporate world. I hope my leadership journey and some takeaways this afternoon will help you as you navigate the corporate world. Let me just share my screen. All right. So uh, this afternoon, I was invited to to share about my leadership journey in FEU and, you know, somehow magbahagi ng mga experiences and challenges that help me embrace the facets of a true leader. So, to start, just like everyone else in this virtual meeting room, if not everyone else, perhaps some of you, I entered FEU with only one goal, which is to really finish my undergraduate degree program in the Department of Communication. I was an alumnus of FEU COM Batch 2018. So, wala sa isip, sa puso ko na sumali ng mga organisasyon. Um, you know, 
maging active sa student leadership. But as you all know, in our university, we have our online pro we have our annual activity called the Tam Hunt, where student organizations set up their tents in the pavilion, in the science building um, walkway. And then some of my friends invited me to visit the booths because they said there are freebies, there are also uh, activities, and then meron din kasi kami before na uh, well the officers of the mass communication society are assisting us the freshmen you know to process all our requirements and then of course yung mga merchandises we're all familiar with that so there and then i signed up as part of the executive committee of mass community then mass communication society and now it's already the fpu communication society and it actually started my not only my leadership experience and journey in FEU, but I think my life leadership in a whole. So I I joined the executive committee under the publicity department. So ito yung um, this is my first organization in FEU. Nakakamis yung mga org get together na face to face. Hopefully makashift tayo from online to face to face again. So we we are we were having our general assemblies. I've been really active in being an executive committee. So um, I started really uh, small as an execom before. Kapag kailangan ng tulong for the thesis presentations ng seniors nandun kami during the masscom summits kami yung mga runners yung mga nasa backstage doing last minute preparations and other production stuff and then i was i was approached by one of the incumbent officers uh luigi di mayuga then president of fe mass communication society he told me that you know i see your potential hopefully maisip mo na being an executive committee is a good start but actually holding a position in an organization will empower and enable you to do more projects and to help more people and at the same time develop your skills um, in communication in people management in project management that are you know essential when you go out of the university so i was invited to run as an academic organization representative and FEU in FEU Mass Communication Society. So ngayon, FEU Communication Society na siya. And, well, I'm not gonna name drop the name of the political party, but based on the colors, you already know what poll party is that. So, you know, um, pinag-isipan ko siya kasi it's a big responsibility being a student leader, especially running and campaigning and you know, really thinking of the platforms that are beneficial to the students. Sobrang nakakapagod siya. E pumasok ka lang naman sa school, you know, just to to finish your undergrad and to land a job after after perhaps if you want to start your business. So this is another. Uh, wala siya sa plano ko to really uh, assume a position in an organization and to run, but. Uh, as you can see in the left side, yan yung mga political rallies before in FEU. So it's really exhausting, you know, uh, visiting different rooms, paulit ulit yung speech, yung platform. Pero isa lang yung pinanghawakan ko dun. Sayang naman na may naniwala sa akin kung hindi ako maniniwala sa sarili ko. And then, baka naman in denial lang ako na gusto ko before kasi ayoko lang na added responsibility pero it runs in the blood noon pa man right so well i i accepted the offer to run and then unfortunately ayan ako po yung akad rep candidate B with only 177 votes um compared to the winning candidate though ito ay partial result pero Yun naman din yung naging result after hindi po tayo natawag sa grandstand at hindi po tayo naging ACAD or representative ng FEU Mass Communication. At first, it's really disheartening actually because you have nothing but your intentions for the student body and then minsan maka-question mo, 
okay, it's not my loss, it's your loss. You know, I could have been a good, I have org rep, I could have served you, I, I could have served you better. But at the end of the day, if you can recall this famous quote from Miss Universe 2018, Catriona Giri, and on your path, you are never denied, but only redirected. Even up until now, whenever I encounter failures, whenever I encounter difficulties or challenges, or kapag yung mga gusto ko hindi nag-align, hindi ko siya nakukuha, I always, you know, put this in mind na I am never denied. Perhaps I am only redirected to better and greater things rather than my initial plan. And then, Years after I ran, that's 2014, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, eight years, eight years after I lost the election, I am the leader I am now because of these organizations. So before I thought, hala, hindi na ako nanalo, hindi ako, you know, I was not elected, I wasn't chosen by the people, but again, thank you to the 177 people who believed in me. Baka close na yun doors. Baka sign to ni Lord na you just focus on your studies and you let go of your extracurricular activities. But no, again, balikan natin yung quote, you are never denied, only redirected. So, um, himayin natin isa-isa. Again, this is not to brag, you know, but rather this will be the focus or the structure of my sharing later para lang din meron tayong context. In 2015, after losing the election as an ACAD org representative of FAU Communication Society, Gladys Morales, who is running as the FUCSA president, who also lost the election, asked me, um, you know what? I, I was listening to your campaign, to your platforms. Malaking tulong ka sa bidobuo kong team. Kasi before, they are still forming the Entrepreneurship Club of FEU. So before meron tayong e-club, the university-wide organization for entrepreneurial development. Kasi wala pa noong um, entrepreneurial course sa IABF. Pero I think ngayon meron na. But then that's a supplement and they work together naman. And I said... Hala, I am a com student, masyadong malayo if I will accept your offer. Kasi, you know, com, risk kami. Um, meron kami mindset na if you are a com student, you work for the student council sa IAS or sa FUCSO or you join university-wide organizations na medyo sa um, pasok sa linya ng communication. Pero entrep, parang ang layo. This is business. This is social entrepreneurship. This is startup. Super layo niya sa communication. And then I told her, okay, sige, I'll try. And then the rest is history. In 2015, I served as the chief, the founding chief information officer or the PRO. In, in 2016, I served as the chief operations officer or vice president. And in 2017, up until 2018, ayan, um, na train. I assumed the position of president or chief executive officer. So, so during my term, I still get invites. You know, you run for SC, you run for um, the a higher um, other organizations. Pero I feel like this is where I belong. Kasi number one, hindi ko na kailangan magpagod sa pangangampanya. Number two, this is a university-wide organization. I can do whatever I want. I am not limited to a specific organization, sa academic organization alone. And iba yung exposure pag university-wide ka. So during my um, stint, I tenure in eClub, my stay from 2015 to 2018, I was able to head a lot of international events and even represented the Philippines in different international delegations, including the Harvard Project for International for Asian and International Relations or HPAIR. International Youth Leadership Summit and um, other national delegations. And then in eClub, I was exposed more in different community problems. So lumawak yung horizon from you know focusing only on the campus as a student leader to being an active citizen. Kasi you are already working on different 
um, community initiatives outside the university. And then from a sp small group of people from 2018, I left the organization with more than 100 active executive committees. And of course, because of the team's dedication and willingness to contribute to the org, we were able to close 5 million worth of sponsorship. So alam niya ng student development nila Ma'am Jonna, nila Ma'am Lenore. Now we've been really dealing with a lot of corporate partners. And then after e-club, after graduating in college, I feel like there's a missing piece in my heart. O ba? Yung ayaw mag-org nung nagsisimula pa lang sa FEU. Paglabas ng FEU, parang pakiramdam niya may kulang. So I tried my luck. I tried applying and submitting my proposal to the Asian Institute of Management Future Bridging Leaders Program or the FBLP. This is a year-long development, um, a year-long development, um, not bootcamp, more like incubator for community leaders with existing community projects. So we incubated our projects. We we sought mentorship with a lot of professors from AIM. Meron kami tatlong workshop na three, three weeks long. And then we pitched to the funders to actually fund our project. So, you know, again, this is out of luck. I just tried my best um, applying kasi gusto ko pa din magkaroon ng life outside work. So, again, nag-align ng stars. We were granted scholarship. Um, by AIM, and then we were chosen, we were part of the top 28 out of the 500 applicants nationwide, and yours truly is also the youngest fellow. So when I joined FBLP, I'm only 21, I'm 24 now, and then, ang sumunod sa akin, 28, 29. So yung proyekto na dinala ko dito sa FBLP is, if you can recall, when I was still in e-club, um, when the Morita Street vendors or the Hepa Lane vendors, as we call it, were displaced dahil nilinis na siya because of different issues. Number one, we have the business regulatory compliance. Uh, hindi sila nagkakomply sa business regu regulatory compliance. And the, there are a lot of issues na ang kanila mga binibenta ay bocha. And then, of course, the hygiene, um, we see naman, that's why it's called Hepa Lane, right? Matas yung probability na when you eat there, baka magkaroon ka ng sakit. We started that in e-club. We tried to mentor them, connect them to different stakeholders. But I wasn't able to ful fulfill it and to finish it dahil I already graduated. And it's the discretion of the, the, the next term to if they want to continue it. So, dinala natin yung... yung um, flight ng mga Morita Street Ventures sa national level. So, that's what I did throughout my stay with the FBLP. And we are still working together with them, but in a different project because of the pandemic. And then after AIM, I, we also again tried our luck. So, I, ako, I, wala talaga akong believe sa sarili ko. Lagi ko na lang sinasabi, swertihan lang yan, champuhan lang yan. After AIM, we were granted uh, an exchange program in the U.S. through the YCE Academic Fellowship. So we heard mentorships and we attended classes from diploma classes from the University of um, Texas at Austin, University of Connecticut, University for Peace. And since the YCE Academic Fellowship started, there are only six FEU alumnus who were granted exclusive and prestige U.S. Exchange Program Scholarship to the U.S. Pero dahil sa pandemic, um, we were deferred to a later date, yung mismong visit to the U.S. And, you know, the learning session was done hybrid, online lang siya. So, through this network, I, we were exposed to a lot of international startup and social entrepreneurship ecosystem which are really beneficial, especially if you want to venture into entrepreneurship. So, who, who am I with? Ano, sino ba mga kasama nating mga FEU alumnus dyan sa YCU? Of course, we have Jack Kuminga, we have Jennifer Pasqua, we have, um, G, uh, I forgot, G, si Ate Gian, I am, and then yours truly, and then meron pang dalawa na medyo higher batch. But of course, I, I hope you will also 
not only as I discuss, you learn, no, you also jot down notes and you check these different leadership opportunities because these are really, you know, prestigious and they will help you widen your network. And then after YC, uh, we all know the pandemic happened last March 2019. Uh, but March 2020, pero December pa lang nag-start na siya, na-lockdown ang buong NCR. Uh, while working with the Morita vendors, as I mentioned earlier, kasi what we want to happen before with the vendors is to formalize them, legalize them, continuously um, capacitate them through different workshops and learning activities, and link them to the LGUs and other partners. So basically, to empower the, life of, the lives of these micro-entrepreneurs. Kasi if only you saw the situation nung dinidismantle ang kanilang mga, mga um, cards, nakakahabag talaga. And you know, I think as an, as an entrepreneurial organization in FEU, you have a responsibility not only to the students of the campus, but also to the entrepreneurs outside of the campus. So dahil na part because of the pandemic, chinat ko yung kausap namin dito sa Morita um, Vendors Association or sa HEPA Lane, si Nanay Dory, I asked her, Nay, paano yan? Um, suspended yung klase, like three days na, paano na yung mga vendors? Kasi before, wala pa nga pandemic, hirap na tayo, pero paano pa ngayon na may pandemic na suspended yung klase? Wala na talaga at all. And then I posted our screenshot of our conversation in Facebook, and to my surprise, 24 hours after I posted that, we were able to raise more than 80,000 worth of donations already from different alumni groups, um, even non-FE students supported the cause. Because at that point in time, most of the fundraisings focus sa PPEs, sa medical frontliners, etc. But nakalimutan natin yung iba't ibang sektor ng lipunan. At kabilang na dito, yung mga naghahanap buhay at kumikita lamang sa kalsada. And then, the rest is history. We did Pantawid COVID project from um, Mar March 2020 up until I think late 2021 or quarter three in 2021. We were able to raise more than 5 million worth of donations in cash and in kind. And initially, we only targeted, you know, benefiting the Morita Street vendors. But we were able to reach more than 12,000 families and 1,500 medical frontliners in NCR. We were recognized by the Department of Health, Philippine Information Agency, ABS-CBN News, and other news outlets. And we were also supported by 50 corporate partners. And gusto ko pong pasalamatan, you know, I have this opportunity, of course, in Mandaluyong, Mom Babes, and the Office of the Vice Mayor. In FEU, we have Mom Ma Karen Panela and the FEU, I think, Faculty Association. Of course, Dr. Kao of the FEU Volunteerism Services Office and Sir Selmer of the FEU Alumni Relations. They've been really, you know, supportive in the in this alumni causes na nag-merge na kami together and we've worked with them. And nakakatuwa kasi kahit graduate ka na, nakatingin pa rin sa'yo si FEU. And then, uh, if you're familiar with Pohon, the Ben and Ben con concert, we are also one of the beneficiaries. We were supported by a lot of corporate partners, including Unilever, Choco Mucho, um, Ayala Foundation, um, Film Foundation, BPI, etc. And then, you know, after all, just to put the cherry on top of the cake or the ice cream or kung ano man yan, we were also recognized by the 10 accomplished youth organizations or Tayo Awards in the Philippines as part of the top 20 out of the 800 organizations. And then Jesse Robredo Foundation, Kaya Natin Movement, uh, supported us and funded some of our initiatives um, for the street vendors in Morita, hindi na lang for the relief efforts. And then, you know, while doing Pantawid COVID project, as you can recall, in late 2020, we were hit by consecutive typhoons. Nandiyan si Quinta, si Rolises, I see Rolly, and then si Ulysses and Bicol. And that's when we co-convened CAP at Penas. So if for Panta with COVID project, we only focus on COVID hit areas, this one naman, we, we aim to help all 
locations or areas in Bicol that were affected by the different typhoons. So, mas malaki siya kasi we merged with an existing organization, Kapit Mindanao, uh, and then nabuo si Kapit Pinas. So, again, we've worked online, of course, with the same, you know, nakakahabag na wala tayong nagagawa. Nagawa nga natin si Panto with COVID Project, baka pwede pa natin ipush pa for the typhoon. So because of the collaboration of different youth organizations, we were able to raise 20 million worth of donation. So that's times four ng donation ni Pantawid COVID Project. And then, well, that's the unupdated family count. But I think as of today, we were already able to raise more than uh, donations benefiting more than 20,000 families because we also have activities during ODET. Um, of course, in partnership with FEU Alumni Relations Office and FEU Volunteerism Services Office. And then, for Capitinas, we were supported by 400 plus corporate partners, including youth orgs and small businesses. And then, to si Panta with COVID Project, top 20, si Capitinas ay nakapasak sa 10 accomplished youth organizations in the Philippines. Again, this will not be possible without the help and the assistance of the different partners and stakeholders and different youth organizations that we've worked with. So after Kapit Pinas, diba, my life is like a splash of rainbow. I've been doing a lot of things simultaneously. I realize I've been doing a lot of relief efforts. It's not sustainable. It was made because of the urgency, because of the situation. But I want to contribute into something bigger, bigger than myself, something that is not relief operations related or humanitarian related, but something, you know, to give back to the youth. Because I've experienced the best of all worlds while doing these um, activities, while attending those trainings. So that's when I co-founded Aktibo Kabataan ng Mandaluyo. Actually, the initial, uh, this idea came when we met with the vice mayor of Mandaluyo. Because he's been really actively helping Panta with COVID Project and Kapit Penas nung nagkakaroon kami ng relief efforts para sa mga nasunugan sa Mandaluyong. So, you know, I pitched this to him. Siya ang pinakaunang nakarinig neto and his team. And uh, this organization, of course, still does fundraising, but we focus now on education, disaster preparedness, good governance, and entrepreneurship. So currently, we have an ongoing voters education uh, campaign called Aktiboto Mandaluyong. You might also want to visit our page. And we've been actively working since the classes started in public school. We helped them sa Brigada Escuela. And then after ACMA, ayan, ang bibo, hindi napapagod. Um, I enlisted in the Philippines, Philippine Air Force Reserve. Um, last 2021, I graduated with the rank of sergeant, manifesting na next year, second lieutenant na siya. And then currently, I received my special order as the civil relations specialist under the civil military operations group. So more like um, humanitarian, again, assistance. And then yours truly also completed the Philippine Air Force Search and Rescue Auxiliary Training and Emergency Medical Technician Training. So, hindi lang po ako marunong bumarel, marunong din ako mag, you know, rappelling, tumalon from the helicopter, papunta sa dagat, and then mag-swim for two kilometers, and of course, maging medic. So, I'm sharing this kasi nakita nyo when I started the discussion, I am just an ordinary student na gustong makapagtapos ng kolehiyo, na-invite sa Tamhan, naging exicom, tumakbo pero hindi nanalo, pero nagpursige. Ngayon, pinap, super proud ako for um, sa uh, achievement nito sa pagiging Air Force kasi pumasok ako dito dahil ang kailangan ko lang before ng truck nila to assist us in, you know, doing humanitarian works. When we visited Alvay, we were in partnership with the Office of the Vice President. Air Force provided us with C-130 na puno natin yon because of the help of different organizations, including FEU. And now, I'm already inside the organization. So, nakakaloka, di ba? Nagsimula na sa pangheram ng truck ngayon. Part ka na ng tropa. Kasi, I saw the value of really widening your network. Especially if kailangan mo ng, you know, pag ikaw yung nangangailangan, meron sila. 
to give back to them because of their help, I joined the reserve force. And well, siguro I can say that I now have access to different um, offices that can help me in my future projects. Like when we when we did audit relief efforts with FEU Volunteerism and Alumni Relations Office, ang bilis na ilipad, sinakay ng Coast Guard, etc. So now, with all this, with all this sharing, with all these achievements, well, I don't see it as an achievement. I see it as a learning journey. Ayan, yung mga ka-FLJ dyan. Sagutan na po natin ang ating FLJ. Um, sa haba-haba ng prosesyon, bumalik ulit tayo sa FEU. Sabi nga ng Tarpolino, nakarelate ako in thy happy halls again. So, before... Uh, and the tarpaulin is specifically for the students where it feels like, you know, nagre-resonate sa akin kasi I'm back. Andito na naman tayo. And then yours truly is now the executive director of the Nicanor Reyes Memorial Foundation. And I am seriously looking forward to doing more programs for the community with the help of the foundation. So with everything I've shared, uh, I, can I can attest. I can attest to this. Um, statement, kasi before sinasabi na leaders are born. But I believe no. Leaders are made, not born. Hinasa tayo ng mahabang panahon. Hinasa tayo ng mga tao sa paligid natin. Hinasa tayo ng mga sitwasyon na tinatawag tayo upang tumulong at magambag. Itong mga tao, sa, sa picture na to, sila yung mga org mates ko nung college. Imagine, most of them, as they call themselves dead kid. They don't have any plans of joining organization. Pero before, when we have our thrive fairs, Christmas fairs, ready sila mag-duty at pumasok kahit hindi nila talaga schedule pumasok. Because of the experiences, because of the people around you, you know, because of the opportunities being presented to you, I can attest that leaders are made. They are not born. Hindi ka man pinanganak sa isang sikat na politika pamilya, Kung gusto mo maglingkod, maglilingkod ka kahit ano pang oportunidad ang ihain sa iyo, tatanggapin mo. Kaya sa mga non-student leaders here, you know, sobrang fulfilling, rewarding, and promising ng experience ko na to. Now, I'll be sharing you um, with all the sharing I've shared earlier, ano ba yung mga facets na dapat ine-embrace ng isang tao, huwag na student leader, na isang tao na gustong pumasok sa leadership. Number one facet that you need to embrace is being a purpose-driven person or a purpose-driven student leader. This is um, what I say every time meron nagtatanong sa akin, paano mo sinimula na leader, leadership journey mo? Lagi ko sinasabi, number one, find your why. Ano yung hugot mo? Bakit ka papasok sa isang organisasyon? Bakit gusto mong tumulong sa mga tao? Kasi alam nyo yung pagtulong, nakakapagod yan. Tanungin nyo lang kami, yung mga youth volunteers, pagod na pagod na kami. Diba? If only we have, you know, an efficient uh, governance, both in the local and national, hindi masyadong kakailanganin ng youth volunteers. Pero again, bakit mo ginagawa yung ginagawa mo? Anong hugot mo? Diba? San ka humuhugot ng lakas pag napapagod ka na sa ginagawa ko? On my end, remember, remember um, I shared earlier the project with the Morita Street Vendors. Bakit ba sobrang invested ako sa kanila? Kasi hindi ako makapagtapos ng kolehiyo kung hindi dahil sa lola ko na sari-sari store bread owner. Before in college, nagtitipid din talaga ako. Lately lang ako medyo naging, alam niyo yun, magastos kasi I have the means na. Pero in college, Tipid, pamasahe, baon, kung merong mga org expenses, titipirin ko yan. Kasi hindi kami nanggaling sa mayamang pamilya. Ang lola ko nagtatrabaho from 5 a.m. to 10 p.m. sa sari-sari store namin. Alam ni Mang Babes yan, sa Fabella Street. Hanapin nyo hanggang ngayon, nandyan yan. Kasi nagtatrabaho siya para magkaroon ako ng pambaon sa college. And then my mom, she's a um, street vendor nung ako elementary pa lang, nagtitinda ng tusok-tusok. Nagrarasyon ng siomay sa mga kantin para kahit pa paano may may pandagdag. Um, my dad is a government worker. Sapat lang ang sinasahod. Find your why. Bakit? Hindi yung nagbukas na mata ko dito. Alam nyo, before in Hepa Lane, marami akong kausap doon na matatanda. 
And then I realized ko, what if lola ko yun, di ba? What if one day, yung sari-sari store namin, tinasara, paano ako makakapagtapos ng pag-aaral? Isipin nyo kung di ako nakapagtapos ng pag-aaral, mabubuo ko ba si Pantawid COVID Project? Mabubuo ba namin si Kapit Pinas? Will I be even speaking in front of you? Definitely not. So if you are planning, or if you, you know, you are inspired to, to join or be a leader, find your why. Hanapin mo yung hugot mo. Hanapin mo yung aangkalahan mo pag pagod ka na. That is an important facet of a leader. You have to be purpose-driven. Number two, you find your niche. Niche is a marketing buzzword, meaning it's a special segment. Diba? Lahat student leaders, what makes you different? What is your advocacy? Anong mailalapag mo sa mesa? Marami tayong advokasiya. Tignan nyo lang yung buhay nyo, yung experiences nyo. Maaari sa inyo, inspired for women empowerment na papanahon dahil meron kay experience that you were harassed online. And this time, you want to, you know, really contribute to the discourse. Maaari yung iba sa inyo, advocate ng good governance, right? Um, dahil, dahil perhaps sa barangay level nyo or sa LGU, nakikita nyo yung mga anomalya. And you want to contribute. You want to be of help. And, you know, you want to run, perhaps, and change the system. So find your niche. I'm sharing this because earlier, if you can recall, I am a comm student. But I, I am very active in an organization leaning in a business um, institute, which is the e-club. But these are actually good qualities of a leader. You find your niche, you think outside of the box, or you think as if there's no box, okay? Huwag tayong magkoconform sa kung ano yung sinasabi ng mga tao sa paligid natin. Along the way, you will find your niche. Saan ka belong? Saan ka ipa-plan? And when you are planted, try to bloom. Sabi nga nila, sabi nila, bloom where you are planted. Another facet that a true leader may embrace is, you know, really working efficiently with the team, forming your team, inspiring your team, leading your team. Find your tribe. If you are an aspiring student leader or if you are already a student leader, I hope you were able to find your tribe. Your tribe is your group, your close friends, because these people, you know, will set accountability for you. You were asking me, bakit ang laki ng pera? Di ba? Paano namin na-account yun? May accountability kami sa isa't isa. Kasi, you know, magkakasama kami and we don't tolerate corruption. Perhaps ganyan. Sa Air Force alone, um, there are also, you know, iba-iba ang sistema ng iba't-ibang institusyon. But as long as you have your tribe with you, kasama mo yung grupo mo, hindi makokarap ang values mo kasi accountable kayo sa isa't isa. Okay? I hope you were able to find your tribe kasi your tribe will have the same mindset as yours. Malalaman mo yan, magkiklik lang kayo bigla and then you'll do great and amazing things together. etong mga tao sa pictures na to, ito yung mga kasama ko sa pagpunta ng iba't ibang lugar, sa pag-attend ng iba't ibang training, sa pagtulong, etc. G lang sila and I wish, no, if you are watching this video and, you know, you are really eager to join the leadership ecosystem or you're already one, I hope you were able to find your tribe. Next facet that a leader must embrace is, you know, always being an empty cup. Yung lagi kang, kahit ang dami mo ng seminars na napuntahan, ang dami mo ng experiences, ang haba na ng resume mo, ang dami mong hinawa kang posisyon, you know, find your mentors. Lagi natin, let's always um, stay grounded at lagi natin isipin na wala tayong alam. Let's always learn to unlearn through our mentors. These are my mentors. First is Gladys Morales. Um, she's my co-founder and e-club. She is now an, a successful uh, sales manager in Sun Life. And soon we will be starting our own consultancy uh, people development business. Of course, um, Sir Joven Castro, he is the very first, first person to believe in me in FEU. Kahit na nuna kami nagkila, nagkilala, mali yung grammar ko sa email ko. Ayan, um, he, you know, he opened a lot of doors of opportunities for me. 
kung nasan man ako, isa siya sa may malalaking contribution nung siya pa i-director ng student development. Of course, makakalibutan ba natin ang director ng FEU Career and Placement Office, Ma'am Babes? Yung picture na yan ay pinicturean lang namin kanina kasi I told her, Ma'am, yung picture mo na nalagay ko sa deck ko, yung may corona ka and bakit post. I want to have a memorable photo with you. And I believe ito, itong picture na to is memorable because you know, ang siguro I could only imagine what she's feeling right now. Yung maingay sa klase niya ngayon, ini-invite niya na mag-talk and mag-share and work colleague niya na ngayon sa FEU. But again, um, whatever I am experiencing and achieving in life right now is not because of me alone, but through these people flash on screen. I hope you find your mentors in different aspects of your life, maybe in studies, in relationship, in spiritual, in leadership, in career, etc. Kasi your mentors, pinagdaanan na nila kung ano man yung mapagdadaanan mo pa. And of course, napaka-valuable ng insights nila para hindi mo na ulit magkamali kung ano yung mga pagkakamali nila before. And of course, iba yung insights ng mga taong to compared sa mga insights na meron tayo. Okay, last, um, last um, important facet na meron ng isang leader is of course, with all the experiences, with all the achievements, with all the milestones you've reached, Paved the, pave the way for the next generation. Um, sabi nga nila, di ba, be the senior you needed when you were a freshman. Kung sino yung kinakailangan mong role model nung nagsisimula ka pa lang, dapat ganun ang ibigay mo. Inspire and mentor the next generation. It's also one of the many reasons why I, why I, why I started at ACMA in Mandaluyong. Kasi there are a lot of potentials of youth leaders but hindi naman lahat ng mga um, youth organizations are active, you know. So we consolidated all the youth leaders. Of course, um, kilala nyo naman yung mga student leaders na nasa screen nyo. If you're familiar with Geb, the current president of CYC, I've been working with him since we started Panta with COVID project. And yung, yung relationship namin na nag-work lang kami, nag-sprout into consultations, into mentoring, into sharing with him different leadership trainings that might equip him in future, uh, in his future and divorce as a, as a leader. And of course, um, dahil kakabalik ko lang ng FEU, I had the pleasure of meeting different youth leaders um, when we receive donations, vegetable donations from the office of the vice president. So it's, in, so it's really important na pag nasa magandang katayuan ka na, you inspire and you mentor the next generation. Kasi it's, it will create a replay effect. Sila naman ang mag-mentor sa mga susunod na generation. And magugulat ka na lang, one day they will thank you kung nasan man sila is because of you. Specifically what I'm doing right now, right? So thank you po sa ating mga mentors na um, nag-enable sa atin para mapuntahan kung nasan man po tayo ngayon. So um, this is um, this is my parting words for everyone. I am, this was our search and rescue auxiliary training when I was um, still in Air Force, when, um, when I did this with Air Force. So, kami ay, you know, sinakay sa rubber boat, 2.6 kilometers away from the shore at kailangan naming lumangoy pabalik. It's part of our search and rescue training, especially sa Lisbon ako ng sakuna. Habang lumalangoy ako, nalulunod-lunod na ako at nakakapulikat talaga, I realized, but kung ba ito ginagawa, di ba? Pwede naman ako isang maging normal na mamamayang Pilipino. Bumoto nga lang ako, malaking contribution na yun. Malaki ng ambag yun sa lipunan. Pero I realized na at the end of the day, life is a never-ending journey. So you are the one, kung you're, you're the one who write your own, um, journey. You design your own destiny. Ako, ang gusto kong, ang retirement plan ko is, you know, to really just be, you know, a consultant, a mentor to everyone, to share my knowledge, to connect people. And then, ang hira, malunod-lunod na ako, gusto ko nang sumuko. Pag tumas ka ng kamay mo, kukunin ka na ng lifeboat, um, balik ka sa pampang, di ka makatapos ng program. Pero I realized at the end of the day, anong path ba ang gusto kong tahakin? Gusto kong magkaroon ng sariling 
path na masasabi ko ako ang nag-design. Gusto ko at the end of the day, ano man yung mga, you know, ano man yung mga na-achieve mo sa buhay, you're still learning, you're still trying new things, you're exploring outside of your horizon, at at the end of the day, isa lang naman na rason bakit ako nagpapakamatay bumalik sa pambang. Gusto ko kasi, um, you know, makatulong pa rin, makapagbigay service sa paraang kaya ko. And sa panahon ngayon, malaking tulong ang ating mga rescuers, you know. At the end of the day, ginagawa ko to hindi para sa sarili ko, kundi para makapagligtas ng ibang buhay pag kinakailangan na. Do not follow where the path may lead. Go instead where there is no path and leave a trail. So, ang hirap lumangoy dahil lumalaban ng current sa akin. Ang hirap nakakalunod. But at the end of the day, I was really thinking of, you know, the people that I can still help after I finish this course. And, the, you know, the the opportunities that this might also open, not only for me, but for other people. And successfully, we were able to finish the 2.6 kilometer one mile swim in Marine Space Internate Cavite. Okay? Ngayon, if you're listening to this talk, you are pressured. No! I started, katulad mo, listening, you know, taking down notes. Ako nga before, every after seminar, I reach out to the speaker, I stay connected, I ask for pieces of advice, I consult, and I hope you will also, you know, seize the same opportunity as I did. Okay? Don't worry, you have your own timeline, you have your own path, but I hope hindi ka lang sumusunod sa path ng ibang tao, gumagawa ka rin ng sarili mong path. And mag-iwan ka ng legacy mo. Your legacy will be the people that you inspired along the way. Okay, I think that would be all for my discussion. I hope we have more time. If you guys are, are, are interested to connect, you may reach me via Facebook. It's Patrick Manuel. And well, we report in the office from Monday to Thursday in the Education Building Room 801. Hopefully, you were able to learn something. I was able to impart um, some experiences and knowledge. And if you have questions, please feel free to send in our chat box. Again, thank you so much for um, Career and Placement Office for this opportunity, Mom Babes, Sir Ron, and to the student development na isa din sa mga malalaking dahilan kung, kung nasaan man po tayo ngayon and kung bakit po natin nagawa yung mga bagay-bagay na yan. Maraming salamat po and I hope I was, I, I was able to make you proud. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sir Patrick Manuel, for such a very inspiring talk this afternoon. And I'm sure our audience, our participants, our student leaders, even our alumni, are, they really learned a lot from you today. And that's also evidenced by the number of questions that we have here in the chat box. And it's really engaging. Uh, talagang we were listening intently, Sir Patrick. No, Totoo, no? Tama -tama yung title na ating you lead this afternoon. We were tam inspired no, by a fellow Tamara, by an alumnus of our university. And uh, to begin our question, I think this is a good start from Charissa Elise Palacio, one of our students from ITHM. Uh, she mentioned here. Good afternoon, sir. What are you uh, what are you doing no, in terms of ensuring that you continue to develop as a leader? And uh, can you uh, share with us your or describe your leadership style? So, sir, no, uh, sir Patrick, with all the, the things that you have accomplished, I think someone is trying to follow <laughs> your path, no, and uh, really curious about your leadership style, sir Patrick. Sige po. Um, siguro to answer that question, sir, mahalaga na lagi nating acknowledge that, as I mentioned earlier, we are an empty cup. At the end of the day, anuman, gaano ka man kapuno, it's important that you unlearn what you, you've learned already. Mm. And it's important kasi sir, times are changing eh. Kung ano man yung mga traditional styles that I've learned when I was, when I was still in FEU back in 2014, hindi na relevant ngayon. And if it's still relevant, I'm pretty sure minimal na lang siya, especially in the context of the COVID-19 pandemic. So there are a lot of learning opportunities in, you know, different institutions. You sign up for webinars, you join different organizations, of course, and you mentioned earlier, 
mentor, mentor. You continue, you, you know, you continuously meet people who will serve as your coach and your mentor who will bring fresh insights and different perspective kung ano man po yung meron ka. Ayan. And then for, for the leadership style, I think I am a democratic leader. If, um, well, ayan, isa sa mga turo ng ating uh, mentors, yes, Sir Joven, you don't use I. We all, you always use we. Kasi at the end of the day, kung nasan ka man ngayon, uh, if you, you know, uh, let's say you are already successful in your field, it's not because of you alone. It's because of the people around you, including your teammate. So I am more like a democratic leader whenever I, I think of a project, I consult with the team, I get their insights and believe me, super amazing. Kasi there are a lot of insights and perspectives na hindi mo naisip, pero naisip nila. So I think that's a really good leadership strategy na not only student leaders must embody, but also, you know, government officials. Yes, thank you, Sir Patrick. No, kasi for, for us, no, uh, educators as well, it's also important to understand no, that we should also unlearn no, and uh, continue to learn as well no, uh, as lifelong learners. And I think it's a good uh, um, attribute or characteristic no, for, our, for all our student leaders here and aspiring leaders no, that you mentioned about being democratic. I mean, also understanding that there are things that you might want to to learn more about and uh, you always see yourself as half empty rather than half full no, as a cup no so that uh, you will be embracing more of the the knowledge and experiences no that you have no so thank you so much for that i think there's another interesting question uh, here I sir more yes sir. sir um yeah one of our one of our students here um, is trying to, you know, would like to know as well more. Yeah, we have bad days as well no, as student leaders no, and as now as professional leader, no. And um, as a student leader, or even now as a leader, sir, what are, uh, how do you deal with the setbacks, no? Or sometimes those episodes when you feel like you have, you're already burned out with your work, no? These questions came from Marcel Anronio and Christian Dominic Moleta. They are related. That's why uh, we would like to learn from you. you know, what what will what are the things you do to motivate yourself? You no, know? I mean, as leader, we are always seen as role models, but we are also, you know, we have also the license to feel bad, you no, know, to have a bad day, and uh, you know, to also feel that uh, validate our feelings you know, when we feel that uh, emptiness or we are burned out with our task. Your thoughts, sir. Yes, sir. I think that's a very timely question and very relevant. You know what? It's really <laughs> lonely to be on top. Totoo po yun. Actually, pinag-uusapan lang namin yun last week na mga friends ko na, you know, who are also working in the corporate. corporate. It's really lonely on top kasi when there are times na nalulungkot ka, you know, Pag sinabi mo siya sa iba ba or sa mga teammate mo, you know, na, ma maapektuhan mo yung mood nila. And somehow, na, na you know, na they dishearten din sila. Kasi as a leader, people look up to you, they anchor to you. Pero you know what, I want, I really want to break that, ano, that misconception na leaders should be strong, leaders should be, you know, leaders should not cry. There is power in vulnerability, sir. Ayan, that, ayan lagi yung sinasabi ko na it's okay to vo be vulnerable at times. It's about time that we break the stigma that leaders must be strong. Perhaps, yes, some positions, some work or some jobs or responsibilities require, uh, let's say, a strong personality or strong emotions. Pero at what expense, right? So answering the question, Yun po yung sinabi ko earlier na it's really important that you know your why. What is the purpose that is driving you to still continue despite the adversity and the challenges? Kasi yun ang anchoran mo eh. Second is to really surround your people, your tribe. Find your tribe. Kasi I'm pretty sure same kayo ng sentiments. So it's good that you process. Perhaps um, take a step back, regroup, and then work again. And then yeah continuously coordinate, uh, talk with your mentors, with your coaches, kasi nakakalungkot maging mag-isa, di ba? Sabi nila, no man is an island. Kaya, 
it's really okay, totally okay to rest and to seek professional help if you need it na. But I think as a leader, it's important that you keep grounded. Talk with the team, process your emotions, and of course, you know, uh, continuously talk with the mentors and the coaches because I'm pretty sure they've been through it already a lot of times. And their, their insights will surely help us. I hope I answered the question. Yes, that's a good, uh, I mean, advice. No, it's it's something that we would like to also take note whenever we feel bad, um, we have the setbacks. No, that vulnerability is also a chance for us to reset, right? Yes. To regroup, you right? Guys. And and also to you know go back to our roots and understand our our core values as well and uh, and try to find again ourselves you no know, whenever we, we feel like we're lost you no know, with all with all the challenges that we're facing you know? all right there's another question a set of questions here also from Leona Flor Isulan and also uh, one of our students here you know from IABF as well uh, Leona Flor I think yeah is a student leader you now from JMA and also uh, one of the questions here, Denzel Ryan Ogsimara, and they want to know about the qualities that you find the most important to be a leader. Um, if Well, you mentioned about all the facets and the, the attributes, but if there's one characteristic or attribute that you that you will say that this is really important for a leader, what what is, what is it, sir, that you would like to highlight? Siguro, sir, uh, for me, personally, if merong isang karakteristik ang isang leader na dapat meron siya, it should be empathy. Kasi doon magsisimula lahat. Lahat. Kaya ka nga naglilid eh. Kasi you feel connected to the people around you. You feel their sentiments. Nararamdaman mo kung nararamdaman nila. Kaya mag ka amidst the adversity. It should be empathy kasi... Paano ka mamumuno kung yung mga tao sa paligid mo is hindi mo kakilala and hindi ka connected? So may disconnect, right? So it's really important that as a leader, we have specific goals, we have specific challenges that we want to, you know, contribute in solving. And as I've mentioned earlier, sir, meron tayong alam natin kung ano yung niche natin. Kasi from the empathy that you possess as a leader, Doon siya magdederederecho. Baka nga because of your empathy, doon mo pa malaman ano yung why mo. And the what and the how will follow. So yun po, I think empathy. All leaders, it's a bare minimum that you have empathy. Interesting. And uh, yeah, it's something that we might not be thinking about on top of our head. No, uh, As a leader, no, we thought that leaders should be, you know, very skillful. Uh, good decision makers, but at the end of the day, it's about kindness. No? The language of kindness would speak volumes of, you know, your intention and your purpose. No? And Leona Flor also mentioned here no, that uh, she admires you being able to find your purpose, your niche, your tribe, and your mentors, and having the passion to lead and inspire others. And uh, a follow-up question to that one of our students here mentioned that, how would I know that I'm in the correct tribe? No? <laughs> Is there something like, para pwede ba yun, sir, na malaman mo na nasa tamang tribe ba talaga ako? How would you know and what would be the factors that would tell you that indeed you're in the correct tribe or, yeah, appropriate one, sir. Thank you. Yes, that's that's a good example, sir. As I've mentioned earlier, well, well, sorry po sa AFP friends natin na nanonood, no? There are a lot of challenges in different institutions, particularly in the military. And you will find that you are in the right tribe if, number one, uh, your values are still intact. Hindi ka nagkakaroon ng crossroads whether you should do this or you should do that. Number two, Number two, you guys share the same purpose and then you understand each other not only during times of success but especially pag may mga setbacks kayo, right? And then number three, you know you find, you've, you've already found your tribe if uh, even you are not around, they still, you know, pull you up. 
Kasi most uh, most ex- most of my experiences working with groups, hindi natin maiiwasan yung mga controversies, yes, yung mga issues, right? But when you're you are with the right tribe, they will be your first line of defense. Sa kung ano man yung mga challenges and you know gossips and other um, disinformation na ibabato against you. And I was able, I, I'm also lucky, you know, I was able to found my tribe while working with the Philippine Air Force. Ayan, kami magkakasama sa mga relief efforts because ang commonalities namin lahat ay we are all development workers. So, yung isa, uh, uh, manager ng isang foundation, yung isa, project coordinator, yung isa, um, mayroong sariling mga initiatives. So, yun. Hindi kayo nagko-compromise ng values nyo, intact pa rin ng values nyo. Kayo ang first line of defense ng isa't isa and you help each other grow more. Kasi naniniwala tayo na ang mga friends dapat they contribute in our growth. Okay, hindi lang sila yung nandiyan kapag hinihiwalay tayo ng mga jowa natin, but also they contribute in our growth professionally and of course holistically. Thank you so much for that, Sir Patrick. And you know, Sir, most of our students here, no, listening and participating, are graduating students and about to join the workplace very soon. Of course, those who are in their second year and third year are still looking, no, and also understanding their career path, no. Sir, how do we apply the leadership skills or the this facets of leadership, no, in the workplace or especially now that you know you have your very extensive experience in the corporate world as a leader, how will this experience contribute to the employment readiness of our graduates? Ayan, sir. Well, ang hat naman na isosot ko ngayon ay hindi isang leader or hindi isang ED na NRMF, but a former um, human resource mm-hmm. practitioner in the Ayala Group. You know what? Mm-hmm. Um, times are changing again. And then, most of the employers nowadays, if not most, perhaps some, but ang culture namin way back in my former companies, aside from looking into the grades, well, I think hindi naman na siya important ngayon. Well, it's still important in some fields, but it really depends on what industry you're applying for. It's really important that you have the leadership background. Kasi organizations nowadays are really fluid. When you enter a workforce, if you found a manager who is, you know, hands-on and really good, really is, who is really good in people management, swerte mo. But most of the companies nowadays, dahil nga sa COVID-19 pandemic, it requires us some skills, specifically, you know, um, flexibility, self-leadership, yung hindi ka namin monitor because of the work-from-home setup. What else? If you are in a um, in a BPO particularly, of course, you will be mon- man- managing a lot of people, a lot of teams, a lot of groups. So it's really important that somehow, meron kang minimal if you're, you're you're still not a student leader, these are these are for the you know aspiring student leaders. Meron kang exposure in working with people, kasi yung mga nasa resume natin, nasa CVs natin. I always tell this to uh, our um students kapag niko coach kami na if you are a member of a specific organization, you include ano yung output mo, ano yung skills mo, kasi yan ang hinahanap ngayon ng employees ng employers natin. Kasi yung mga skills mo na yan, ang mga, yung mga experiences mo na nasa resume mo, yun ang magbabak up na you are suitable for the job or the position na may requirements sila and ina-applyan mo. So yeah, uh, sorry luma- lumayo na ako sa question sir, but you know, it's really important talaga na meron tayong leadership skills when we enter the corporate job. Kasi doon, hindi ka magtatrabaho on your own you will be um, you will be working with a lot of teams and required talaga that you are really proactive and you know how to work on different teams and in the future perhaps lead people 
Yes, thank you, sir. It's a good motivation for our students here, especially those who are still thinking you know, of joining the organization, student orgs, you know, and of course, those who are still already student leaders to continue, um, you know, their, their skills, you know, develop their skills and uh, gain experience you know, to, uh, to become a better leader as they prepare themselves to go to the workplace. Like what uh, Mom Babes earlier said, that the top skills now based on the world economic forum is leadership skills and that's something that we would like to help our students with you know, understand um, as they try to be part you know, of the workplace and also uh, when they go with their career right and sir um, would you say that um, a leader is something that should just be uh, be be a good follower first or is it something that is uh, self-taught or is it something that um, as a future member of the the workplace is it something that would just happen naturally or will just uh, you know will just be triggered by a certain uh, event your thoughts about this sir i answer actually well in relation to my slide earlier that leaders are made Ako po, uh, I believe talaga na it is an, an ending journey, life journey ang leadership. And sometimes, the situation will just require you to step up. Kung ikaw ang panganay sa pamilya, wala kang choice kundi maging natural leader. Especially if you are a breadwinner. If you are a working student na, you know, still also contributing to the family, you have no choice but to step up and, you know, to lead, to work, to finance all the bills and all the expenses. If you are a student and you see na may mga organizations in line with your skills, um, you can be enticed to join. So uh, to, to cut the long explanation short, it's leadership is so complex. It's so complex kasi hindi mo masasabi kung ikaw ba ay, kung paano gawin yung isang leader, di ba, the making of a leader. But the situation uh, will require you to be a leader. Well, siguro to, to ano na lang, a famous quote perhaps, time has the ultimate truth teller. Time will tell you if, you know, it's about time that you step up. The experiences will tell you the people around you will tell you whether it's about time that you step up. And that it will come naturally. Natural lang siya, hindi siya pilit. And yun yung masayang part kasi alam mo sa sarili mo na hindi mo siya pinilit. The experiences required you to be one. I hope I answered the question, sir. Yes, uh, and also remember, sir Patrick, no, uh, what Abraham Lincoln mentioned that to predict the future, you must create it. And that's really important that, you know, the experiences that you get you know, joining student organizations will be really useful and will benefit you as soon as you join the workforce and create your own career and, of course, establish your own identity and, of course, uh, be create a contribution to the society, as we say. Sir, we have a lot of questions, but I afraid, I'm afraid rather we, we do not have the luxury of time. I mean, I'm so, uh, you know, um, overwhelmed with the question of our students. I think, Sir Patrick, um, we can maybe check this after the webinar. These are really interesting questions from our, uh, all, all the students here that they really want to know about more of your your path, sir, you know, from student leader to become a, become a successful professional right now. And I'm sure that they learn a lot from this discussion and uh, they understand the, you know, the, the facets of leaders of a leader or a true leader could be really something that they know already, but they just have to discover it with, with the help of their mentors and their tribes. Okay, Sir Patrick, thank you so much on that note. We would like to again thank our speaker this afternoon, Sir Patrick Manuel. Before we officially conclude our you lead leadership training today, we would like to present first this certificate of appreciation to our resource speaker. Let me read the text first. Far Eastern University 
Career and Placement Office in collaboration with the Student Development Office Certificate of Appreciation is awarded to Mr. Patrick Manuel for his valuable contribution as resource speaker during the ULID Leadership Talk series titled Beatam Inspired, Embracing the Facets of a True Leader given this 22nd day of February 2022 at the Far Eastern University of Manila. Signed, Gracial A. Lintag, Director of FEU Student Development, Maria Carmencita Suba Alfonso, the Director of FU Career and Placement Office, and Generoso Pamitan Jr., PhD, Assistant Vice President for Academic Services. Sir Patrick, before we officially end the ULID webinar, are there any parting words or final pieces of advice or anything that you'd like to share with your fellow Tamaraos and the fellow student leaders, Sir Patrick? Thank you so much, Paul. If you are watching here right now and listening and you are not yet a student leader, but you want to, you know, explore, join organizations, do so. Nandiyan ang ating student development. You know, sinasabi ko nga, sir, I, I, I owe it to them um, where I am right now because of the leadership of Sir Joven. And of course, um, of course, we have their Mom Concha, Mom Marge, Mom Rai, and the rest of the team. Um, it's uh, it's good that you start your leadership journey now. Okay, there's no other time but now. Just do it. And for our student leaders, I hope you will pave your own path. But of course, always still be authentic. Kasi as time goes by, kapag corrupted na masyado sa power, especially if in an organization, medyo well, um, in any organization rather, nakakalimutan natin yung values natin, yung core natin. Lagi lang natin, you know, intact, isa puso, ano man yung mga values natin. And let's always be grounded. San man tayo mapunta, let's always give back, especially to the people na tumunong kung nasan man tayo. Thank you so much, Rondel, for the meaningful discussion. Po. Salamat. Thank you again, Sir Patrick. Sir, all the questions here you know, will just collate this, and uh, you know, we really value the participation of our ULEAD students, uh, participants here, and student leaders will be, uh, you know, hopefully we can also take note of these questions uh, after the, the event. Okay. And uh, Thank you so much again, Sir Patrick, for gracing uh, our event this afternoon with your valuable knowledge and experience uh, to our students in attendance. Please do not forget to answer the, the online student activity evaluation form so we can also provide you with your e-certificate of attendance for today. We would like to invite you again to the next ULID Leadership Talk uh, on behalf of the Far Eastern University Career Placement Office and the Office of Student Development, we thank you, our dear students, and also all the student leaders who joined us today. We hope that you've, you learned a lot from today's ULEAD event. Many thanks also to the Marketing and Communications Office for making this live webinar and FB live streaming possible. For updates, please check the Career Placement Office official Facebook page from time to time. And as we end, may we invite everyone to join us in singing the FEU hymn. This is again your MC, Ron Gascon. Keep safe, everyone. Be brave, Tamaraos.